Okay, um, welcome everybody to the April 14th uh, Raleigh Council Term and Compensation Study Group meeting. Uh, sorry for the bit of a delay. We we're still uh, with the virtual meeting system. Um, we still hit a couple of kinks here and there, but we appreciate everybody's patience and uh, welcome to the members of the public that are here joining us. Uh, first order of business would be to review and approve the March 29th uh, meeting minutes. If everybody's had a chance to review them, are there any changes, modifications? Uh, if so, let me know. Hearing none, then I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Second. All right, we have a motion a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, so meeting minutes have been approved. Um, Next, I want to, uh, before we get into the business today, I want to just take a couple of minutes and um, one, say that I was happy that uh, we reached consensus on uh, four year terms last time. And again, as we've stated, uh, nothing is finalized until we get to the point where we're going to actually vote on our recommendation to council. So um, you're not held to that uh, by any stretch, but it, it did seem that we had reached consensus on that point. Um, we are probably now moving into the topics and tasks that uh, we were assigned by council that we it may be harder to reach consensus on, uh, but I wanted to commend everybody so far that we've uh, really been respectful of everyone and uh, have had good exchange of ideas and folks um, providing their points of view. Um, but I also want to say that now that we're going to probably embark on the more difficult tasks, uh, compromise is, as anyone knows in politics today, compromise is kind of a dirty, dirty word. And uh, we seem to see it at the local level, state, you know, all levels of government where it's kind of more um, impressive to score political points than it is to, you know, kind of try to make good decisions for good outcomes. So um, with that in mind, I just want us to kind of reiterate some points we made in the beginning of this that uh, I hope that we will work towards uh, compromise to the extent that we can, at the end of this, make a, um, make a unified uh, recommendation to council um, and realize that some of us won't get everything we might want, but if we can um, improve the system of uh, governance for the city, uh, even if it's not where we individually think it should be, uh, collectively, if we can make an improvement, um, I hope that's where we'll end up. Because I think that if we can come at this with a unanimous recommendation, it will send a signal to council that this diverse group of folks with um, strong opinions was able to um, make a recommendation that they all feel strongly about and are comfortable with. Uh, that will do a couple of things. One, it will send a message to the community that uh, we as a group felt like this was a, whatever we recommend, assuming we do, uh, that it's the best uh, outcome that this group collectively came to terms with. Uh, it will also send a signal, I think, to the elected officials that um, it'll make it a little harder for any one of them or several of them to pick and choose uh, what we, our recommendations if we piecemeal it uh, and if it's not unanimous. Um, and so uh, as we get on to the next few tasks that we've been assigned, I just wanna help ask everybody to, um, keep that in mind. And that's not to say at the end of this that uh, we're not allowed to have our own individual, individual positions or opinions. Um, but I think if we could say uh, to the community and to the elected officials that uh, this is our best recommendation. And although each of us may have our own opinions about things, we feel strongly that um, 
this is the best outcome for the city. It's going to move the city forward and it'll improve things uh, and certainly not make them worse. So uh, I appreciate you all uh, indulging me with that. I know I'm not the best public speaker in the world, but I also uh, have tried to, um, I think I'm pretty good at bringing about compromise. So I hope we'll continue to work along the spirit in the spirit of that and um, get moving. So thank you. Uh, next order of business was to review um, the Charlotte report in a bit more detail uh, in the agenda that I sent around. I, I provided links to um, several sections of the report and uh, wanna see if anybody has comments or um, uh, thoughts based on what they've looked at at this point. Uh, and it can be about the four-year terms, but today primarily we were uh, gonna focus on the issue of staggering. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to the group and we'll start talking about it. Maybe. So in looking at the report, it, it was encouraging to me to see how many of the peer cities from the Charlotte report and also other cities in North Carolina that have four year terms did in fact use a staggered approach um, to know that that is kind of seems to be a pretty broadly applicable format that other cities have found success with, um, I think is a good thing. Uh, it's nice to have those kind of examples um, and to also look at the some of the information about how that staggering was done. I mean, there's a lot of moving pieces in that piece of the discussion, but I, I was glad to see that that data in the in the report. Yeah, and for I, I did a account, um, and I think it's accurate, but based on the report um, of the I call them the national peer cities that Charlotte looked at, sixteen were four year terms and 10 of those were uh, staggered and three had uh, two year terms. And then there was um, Dallas and Tulsa kind of had a hybrid where they had uh, the mayor was four year terms and the council were two year terms. And I think one was staggered and one was uh, not, Tulsa was not staggered and Dallas was staggered. So, um, I agree with you that it was pretty, pretty heavily weighted on the national level. Others have observations, comments about that? Uh, nothing, uh, uh, I mean, I came up with pretty much the same conclusion that staggered uh, made some sense. Uh, for me, it feels like it gives you the opportunity for both responsiveness and longevity. Um, and while the um, state wasn't as heavily vested in the four-year terms as the national list was, um, it, it seems as though four-year staggered was a more, uh, seemed to be a, a bigger uh, ma a majority of them were in that space as opposed to all at the same time, which I think is, um, uh, personally, I think that's risky going for a four-year term before you have, have any four-year term, everybody on the same schedule before you have any opportunity to make a conversation with uh, the uh, elected officials about uh, where the direction of the city's going. Yeah, and I looked at, um, at least with regard to the North Carolina cities that the Charlotte report looked at, um, four cities were four-year terms, uh, four were two-year terms, and then they were split for uh, four, four staggering. And the cities that staggered were um, Asheville, Cary, uh, Durham, 
and Greensboro. And so Winston-Salem was no, and Charlotte, obviously, we know was no. High Point, Raleigh, obviously, Fayetteville, and Mecklenburg County. Um, and so um, that is the data we have. I guess I, I, I didn't take notes from last time, but maybe we'll just go around and if folks can tell us where they stand on staggering, um, whether or not you, you may have changed your views from the last time. I know we had some discussion about it. Um, and so I'd like to just kind of round robin and ask folks to, to kind of say where you stand today. Eric, this is it. Go ahead. I was gonna say that I, I'm definitely for staggered terms. Okay. All right. Um, don't be shy. I'll have to end up calling on everybody. Yes, Eric, this is Justin Sutton. And um, the same as, I guess, my, uh, I think it was last, yeah, our last meeting, I was in favor of the staggered approach just from the continuity um, perspective of the, the council. But another pertinent piece, I, I guess, in looking at the data um, from the Charlotte study report was this public input survey. And I don't know if we had discussed uh, that portion or if it was, if we'd ever floated that idea of uh, distributing a, a, a public survey uh, for input, for public input on, uh, on, on these topics, similar to what Charlotte has done. Uh, we have not. Um, and I'm a little reluctant because that wasn't kind of what we were, we weren't tasked to do it. And I feel like, um, I think, you know, my, my perspective is that council appointed us for various reasons, whether we had some expertise or some experience or, uh, or just interest in the topic. And I think that, uh, I think that they wanted our collective uh, perspective. And when we turn it over to them, then they certainly have the ability uh, to do that. I'm concerned when you, unless you conduct a kind of, uh, I don't know what it's called, a, you know, actual scientific poll, um, I get concerned that if we just post something and ask for input, it, it really doesn't necessarily reflect the community because um, as you, you all probably can gather folks that are interested in the topic will respond and folks that haven't really thought about it or aren't engaged with the city in general uh, may not respond. And so I don't know that we'll get a necessarily an accurate reflection of where the community is as a whole. Um, and to do an accurate, you know, an actual valid survey, obviously it yeah, takes yeah. Yeah, money. Have, have the resources, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. we have no money and no, resources. So I get a little concerned to do that. And again, um, my impression, and, and certainly I'd entertain other, other folks' uh, thoughts, but um, I feel like we were asked to give our input and our views of this based on our experience. And um, for whatever reasons, council appointed us. And I think we should probably um, avoid going beyond that. Now, if council wants to add that to our list and provide the resources to do it. That's certainly something they're entitled to do, obviously for, to us, but I think it would also delay potentially our, um, our effort to get a recommendation to council. Uh, do, other, do others have- um, Eric, this the, is Weeks. Hey, uh, Councilor Weeks. I was with the, uh, for the four year term, but I was with the non, non staggered type and let me ask you a question, but your statement that you just made in our recommendation to the city council and in our input, couldn't we put in our recommendation for the city council to do a citizen survey? Not us, but couldn't, couldn't we put that in our recommendation? 
uh, we certainly can. Um, uh, you know, they, they're required to do a public public hearings, and I suspect that uh, something like that would be on their list. But I don't know that. But we certainly can add that to the yeah. to our recommendation. Nothing prevents us not, from doing that. Not that we are doing it, but we can re request and see if the city council would take that up, because it, as I stated earlier. We are talking about two and four year term, uh, even though with our input, we would still, to me, we need the citizens input on this also before a decision is made by the city council. I agree with that. So yes, we certainly can add that. And if we, you know, at the end when we're making our recommendation, that's certainly a possibility. Um, but let me let me pin you down. I can't remember. What is your view of staggered versus non-staggered? I am still going with what I said in the region. I go with a non-staggered. Non-staggered, okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd be interested in um, Councilor Weeks's rationale for the non-staggered uh, I, I come to a different conclusion, and so I'm just trying to understand uh, the value proposition of a um, non-staggered situation. All right. Uh, my reason for it is, as we, I stated earlier, uh, even if you look at the Charlotte report, they talk about uh, continuity and other parties for the staggered and the non-staggered uh, part, and they've been on the city council, even though unless we come up with a system how many people would go in uh, uh, for election? How many would be out for election? Would that interfere with what we already have going on the agenda for the city council uh, on a two-year part compared to a four-year uh, term? And I don't see how with a non, uh, I, I say with a staggered one, how do you continue the continuity of the uh, city council? It's just me uh, talking right now. We had it before. We even have it now with the two-year term. Uh, you have election and look at the last election. You changed four or five people in the last election. But a whole lot of things that were on the agenda did not come up at the beginning for the uh, new uh, city council that was there. So people were still trying to figure out what are we going to do? What are some of the things? And the only thing that came out right away had to do with the ban or disbanding of the CACs. And that was said even on the uh, uh, on the agenda when we close when they close out the last time. Uh, so let me um could I, could let I respond me, to that, Eric? Sure. Uh, but, uh, to that point, um, one of the risks associated with having everybody on the same schedule is that you have the kind of massive turnover that we saw in the last election cycle. So uh, out of eight, I don't know if it was five that were right. changed out. So in a, in a staggered situation, you wouldn't have a situation where you would get that kind of broad uh, um, disturbance. So you might have two or three, but you wouldn't have the entire majority changed out so that the continuity would take place as a result of your holdover uh, uh, counselors able to keep the agenda going while the new ones come in and have an impact on it, but you wouldn't have a wholesale turnover in the personnel on your city council, if I understood uh, the concern that you presented, uh, Eugene. All right, appreciate that very much. Thank you. Well, let me, uh, let's get the, um, there's been a couple other people that, that haven't um, responded yet. I, and I can't remember their, people's positions from last meeting. So I'll put Beth on the spot next. That's good, I was raising my hand. Um, <laughs> um, my, my perspective is, you know, I. I I was sort of waffling at the start, but um, I've come to believe that having staggered terms may make more sense in terms of continuity of, of government for, for just the reasons that, uh, that Harvey stated, that there you know, would remain council members who were active and engaged and not turning over in a particular election who could 
help to um, educate uh, you know, new council members who are coming in uh, on how things work and sort of the history of the process while also um, keeping the agenda moving forward. Um, and I think, you know, as our city is getting bigger, our, you know, the, the, the budget of the, the council, the, the responsibilities of the council are becoming greater and greater. I think that sense of continuity is much more necessary than it used to be when, when we were smaller and, um, you know, there was, there was uh, less opportunity for um, lack of understanding to have an impact on governance. Thank you, Beth. Um, Diana, are you... again. Uh, I have to listen to Harvey and uh, Beth. Uh, uh, you kind of twist my mind there a little bit. I think I'll go with the second part too. Uh, I thought about some other things from what I uh, saw when I was on the city council compared to what we are talking about now, okay? Well, and again, we're not going to hold anybody to this. We're just, I want to have a good exploration of all the issues and uh, make sure we don't uh, overlook something or, um, you know, one of the important things about this effort is to also try to explore any um, and identify any unintended consequences and um, things we may overlook if we don't really delve deeply into it. Uh, so Diana, I think uh, you're up. Okay, um, I'm still standing on what I said in the last meeting. I'm going for staggered. Okay, and Nirvana is not able to join us today. Um, I, uh, Ashton, I'm sorry. That's just fine. Yeah, I think, you know, I initially kind of wavered back and forth a little bit, but digging further into the Charlotte study and the research and the other peer cities that are staggered, it feels like that is the, the right route for us from where I stand right now. I'm still certainly open to feedback, you know, to the contrary, but I think that kind of is the, the, makes the most sense for a city where we are and where we are going. Thanks. And um, that is uh, my view as well as I think that um, I feel like staggered terms, and I think Beth alluded to it a little bit, this is a, uh, the city now has a just slightly over a billion dollar um, budget and we have, um, you know, complex problems and it's very hard to, a lot of them are not solvable uh, on two year cycles and they require uh, difficult decisions and sometimes taking unpopular positions, uh, right? I, for example, la last council meeting this uh, yesterday at the work or Monday's work session, you know, council struggling with some uh, deferred maintenance issues that are going to take uh, revenue. Um, and, uh, you know, in some form or fashion, this is my interpretation, they didn't make any decisions, but uh, it's going to require either cuts to something or uh, increases in uh, taxes to catch up on things. And, um, that may take you know several years to phase in, or these other uh, you know implementing the Lake Transit plan. Those are decisions that take years and uh, maybe even decades. And if we um, if we lose, uh, if we turn over council all at once, uh, it can set those efforts back. Uh, and I think staggering allows for course corrections uh, because it is a way to still signal to um, council potentially that, hey, we're not, we're not thrilled with what's going on, but it also uh, provides some insulation from um, uh, short-term uh, potential um, electoral consequences uh, that uh, especially when, and I know one of our tasks later is going to be to deal with uh, voter turnout, but as we all know right now, uh, turnout is tough and, and fairly low in local elections. So it doesn't take a lot to um, flip, you know, a particular district uh, election. Uh, and if there's one potential flashpoint issue, it can really 
uh, drive the outcome of a vote of a council election and alter the makeup. And that may, be, may not be good for the overall direction of the city. Uh, and so um, I think with the idea of longer terms with staggering, it allows kind of the, it allows the city to address the complexities of policy decisions and implementation uh, while also not creating too much insulation uh, where there, where potentially counselors are not as uh, responsive to uh, elected or citizens as they might need to be if there was such a distance between any election. Um, so that's kind of my view. Uh, does anyone else have thoughts or uh, comments on that or? Um, because I do want to make sure that we try to explore all the issues because I don't want to, um, you know, down the road and we're deciding or thinking about making a decision. Um, we, we, um, we discover an issue that we hadn't thought about. And uh, so anyway, now any other comments on the Charlotte report? Eric, real quick on the staggered terms. Um, yeah. I would also agree with everybody that I- Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I apologize but, for this shift. No need. Um, but one, the one concern that for me does resonate on having staggered terms is the one that Beth, I believe, brought up last time, which is that if you have, how you divide those staggered terms, if it results in people not being able to predict or know who's going to be on their ballot in any given election cycle, that that might have a, a, a negative effect on, on turnout and just, again, on people, on voters feeling like they know what's going on and when they're voting and all that kind of stuff. So I do think it's important to be really mindful of that as we think through the how the terms ought to be staggered and how you split that up amongst the council. But in general, I agree with everybody else that staggered seems to be the best kind of balance between both accountability um, and also continuity. So it, help um, explore the, the issue you're talking about a little more, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so say that you were to kind of just divide the council, right? We just kind of rolled the dice and said it's half and half. So say that for district C, you end up with a your district C counselor is on a four year cycle that matches up with the at large. But that means that every other, every two years when you have an election going on for the city council, if I live in district C, there's going to be a cycle. So every other two years, I will not have any council representation on the ballot. Whereas if you were to say, so like Beth's suggestion was to potentially talk about putting the at-large people on all members all on one four-year cycle and to have the district representatives on another four-year cycle. That's not gonna be half and half under the current makeup of the council, but it would mean that me as a voter, I will always have either my district representative or my at-large representative on my ballot. And so I'm not playing a, do I have, like, do I have to vote this cycle or not? Um, you could also potentially have the mayor, we had discussed the, a model where the mayor remains on a two-year cycle separate from the city council, right? So you could potentially have, say, the mayor and the at-large on one four-year cycle, and you could have the district members on, this, on the opposing four-year cycle. And that way, Raleigh citizens always have somebody from city council on their ballot every two years. Um, Again, we have to discuss like the merits potentially of having a non half and half staggered term procedure um, or, and that could also be part of the discussion around composition, whether we think we need to add more seats, the nature of those seats, all of that. Um, but I do think that that is an important, I think predictability for voters in terms of knowing when they have to vote, when they, when, when they have to pay attention enough in order to cast their vote in a way that they feel comfortable with, that they feel informed enough to do so, all of that kind of, I think, goes into how we think about staggering. And um, yeah, I, I think, and again, as you suggest, we have to think through, you know, at some point we might have to 
put a board up and um, and Jerry Cohen had has some I think thoughts on this as well. Um, I think but Jerry, I like the I, Jerry's raised his hand. So okay, and I don't know why I can't see folks raising their hands, but let me make a couple of comments and then we can um, we can have uh, Jerry join us for that. Um, I do like the idea intuitively of of making sure that every citizen that wants to vote has the opportunity to vote for somebody uh, each each election. Because again, um, I, we want people to, uh, one, feel engaged, and we want them to actually be engaged. And uh, the, the further the distance between elections and um, between elections, I think you run the risk that folks especially if a decision is made that they don't feel good about in a micro level could, um, you know, become dis dissatisfied that they haven't, you know, haven't had an opportunity to um, weigh in and have some input. So uh, I, I like that idea. And um, I want to see if others on the committee have thoughts about that as well uh, in terms of making sure everyone has Every citizen has a vote on each cycle uh, versus having potentially a four-year gap. Do, do folks have thoughts on that? And I just weigh in because, like I said, I cannot, for whatever reason, see um, hands being raised. Or if somebody can help me, Harvey, if you want to call on people that might have their hands raised, I'm fine with that too. Sorry about that. Well, I, uh, the, the my feedback here is that we're looking for that the happiest space we can between longevity and responsiveness. And if there is a direction that council is going that people like, every two years they have an opportunity to support the direction that's going. If they feel it's uncomfortable about where they're where we're headed, they also have that opportunity once every two years, either at the at large, or in their district representatives. So I think it answers the responsiveness question that the two year, uh, every two year crowd would like, but gives us the continuity that we've been talking about in terms of keeping the city on track for some longer range decision making. So uh, th that's what I think the value proposition is for us in going to what uh, Catherine has suggested. Uh, do others uh, want to weigh in on that? Do we agree, disagree, other thoughts on it? Hi, Eric. This is, just, this is Justin Sutton. And I, I guess to Harvey's point, uh, uh, Harvey, you uh, were of the impression that we were to bi bifurcate the staggered uh, election cycle between the at-large and the district members? Uh, at this point, uh, yes, although uh, uh, the Durham model has the mayor every two years so that you've got somebody at large in the conversation every two years. Um, but I don't know how that just, that seems like penalizing the mayor uh, for having to run every two years while you let everybody else run for four. But there, there may be some philosophical bent to that. And Mr. Cohen is antsy over here in the corner and may have some thoughts on sort of what the big pictures are. But I, I, I'm leaning towards at large in one cycle and districts in another. We, well, let's... Uh... If, if but, you're open to hearing from Jerry, I think we have to let him in. Yeah, if um, Stacy could uh, allow uh, Jerry to come in and give his thoughts since he's kind of been informally advising us and obviously sure. has expertise. He, yes, I have unmuted him. Thank you. Good afternoon, Jerry. Thanks for hey, joining thanks. us. Thanks all. Um, I'm Durham. Their district council people are up on one side of the cycle. There are three district council members and there are three at-large members who are up on the other side of the cycle. Their mayor has a two-year term. I worked with the Charlotte Mecklenburg School Board in 1992 on this exact question. They have their five district 
members up on one side of the cycle and there are four at-large members up on the other side of the cycle, that's nine, it's not a balance. Uh, right now, obviously for Raleigh, that would be five and two if you kept the current uh, balance between district and at-large. But so there's two examples of the at-large and districts being different sides of the cycle. Also that system makes it easier to do redistricting every 10 years because if you try to redistrict districts and some people are up and some aren't that year. For instance, Wake County School Board in 91, they redistricted and my precinct didn't get to vote for school board for six years. And the next precinct over got to vote two elections in a row, 93 and 95 or something like that. So it can lead to an unfair result or the redistricting meaning that somebody couldn't run for reelection because their precinct wasn't up. So it's simpler if you have, if you're going to um, divide them up to have uh, districts on one side and at large on the other, but you could have a different sum of the districts or whatever. The other, the other issue is under the, and this happens to cities with four-year terms under the general law, if there's a vacancy in the first 18 months of a four-year term, then it goes on the ballot at the midterm for the last two years of the term. I had that happen in Chapel Hill where we had a two-year term on the ballot at the same time as a four-year when I was on the council there. Um, on the other hand, the Raleigh City Charter says that vacancies are filled by the council for the remainder of the unexpired term, but that was obviously in the concept of the terms were two years, so it didn't matter. So that's some decision that will need to be made uh, if you go to staggered four-year terms is, could the council fill a vacancy for three and a half years, or would there be a midterm election for that district or at large seat? Same with the mayor, for example. So that's so, sort of so Jerry. So a couple of questions. Um, in in that scheme, where would you put the mayor? Would the mayor, if you just split up the at large and the district, would you would you? And assuming the mayor was four year terms, would you put that? Would you put the mayor with the? I guess you'd put him with the at large. I don't have any opinion on that. I don't think it really matters to the election functioning, which side of the election the mayor is on. I would say that um, if you had just two seats and you know turnout, there are several Wake County municipalities that have four year terms for the mayor and staggered council. And when you have an election where it's the mayor is not up and just some city council members, the term the turnout is even more abysmal than when you have the mayor's office up for what that's worth. Well, that's what I was thinking was if there, you know, part of what our charge is, is to discuss uh, increasing turnout. And it, it seems like in some form or fashion, it would be helpful to turn out to have a, have a citywide election going on um at the same time now if um would there be any restriction on when uh and this is maybe out of left field but uh, could a bond for instance be put on either either election it wouldn't matter whether it's district or at large it may be an obvious dumb question but um municipalities can have bond issues either at the time of the city election but not at a runoff or at the even year primary or general election, there's three dates in each two year cycle. Okay, so there could be some cities like Raleigh that have bonds quite often. There could be some effort to put them on, you know, on the district side of things when whether they want lower turnout or not. I know there may be some political well, thing, issues correct. going on. Chapel Hill and Durham have their mayor for two years and their council for staggered four years, but there's some Wake County municipalities that have staggered four-year terms with a mayor with a four-year term. So it's all over the place. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks. We I'll, appreciate be, I'll, that. I'll mute. Thanks. Okay. okay. Uh, do do um, Eric, folks on the committee have thoughts on that, comments? Eric, this uh, is Beth. Um, I would just say that, in you know, in my opinion, it makes sense to have the mayor grouped with the at-large, um, you know, so that you would have three 
you know, three groups up for elect or three seats up for election across the city at the same time, and then all the district seats up for election across the city. Now, it wouldn't be exactly equal, um, you know, in terms of numbers of seats that could could turn over, but um, I think it provides for the best clarity and, and continuity for the city. Um, Eric, I think yes. there, uh, this brings up an interesting question. I listened to Jerry talk about Durham where the mayor is on every two years, which I'm not uh, at, on principle all that enthused about. But I am curious about uh, us exploring what happens if all the districts are in the one cycle and all the at, at large in the other. When the districts are up, uh, how much of a drop do you see in voter participation? Because there, it, it winds up being a very narrow, narrow, it could be a very narrowly focused neighborhood kind of conversation that gets somebody worked up and they show up and the big picture conversation about where the city's going gets lost in that and there's only a few people that show up to vote so i i i don't i'd be interested in exploring the durham dynamic uh or perhaps what's happened in terms of voter particip participation in the cities in the county so that we had some sense of whether there's a cause and effect as uh, Jerry suggested might be the case. Well, uh, at least what I heard Jerry say is that turnout was abysmal on the district, more abysmal than it is typically. So that's a, you know, uh, we can certainly look to confirm that, but. Uh, you know, it, intuitively that would carry, it seems like, but again, intuition isn't always correct for sure. Um, others, comments, thoughts about this? Cause I wanna make sure we've, and I'm not trying to, we don't have to take our whole time today, but I, I wanna make sure we um, kind of got everybody's thoughts and concerns. And even if it's just to raise questions, and please just jump in, because again, I can't see if you're raising your hand or not at this point. I'm kind of with Harvey there that, well, I'm well, definitely didn't like the idea of keeping a mayor for two year terms. <laughs> it, it seems like you need something to drive turnout for that, for both election cycles and Maybe there's other options for that. I'm not sure, but it, it does sound like from what Gary said, you kind of need to keep the district elections together. Otherwise, the redistricting that happens gets difficult, right? Um, so I'm kind of wondering if there, what are the other options there to try to make sure we don't have one election cycle where just no one shows up? I don't know what the answer for that is yet, but that, that brings the having the mayor run every two years back into question. Uh, I, and I guess the other thing, um, and again, I'm not a math person, I'm not very smart at these things, but could we, I guess we could break up the at large. Well, my and, other, and also, yeah, I was just going to say that, I mean, I think if you were going to keep it with the mayor for a year, you'd want the mayor to run with the district side, which of course is gonna put it lopsided. You're gonna have a lot more seats, at least under the current scheme uh, running that year. Um, but I think you're gonna have more people. I don't think having just the at-large people without the mayor is gonna cause as big of a drop off as just having the district people without the mayor running. That makes sense. But you're still, but then you're dealing with, you know, six people running in one cycle and two in the other currently, which still puts us in a, not the best situation. We're yeah, keep them. Go ahead, Ashton. I was just gonna say, I think that that does make sense, and I wonder if there's not a mechanism in our proposal that we could 
um, implement for future changes of when, how those races are broken up. Just thinking about the redistricting. I know that data is going to be coming out relatively soon and we get into larger conversations that are not necessarily the purview of this group, but you know, do we need more seats and those kinds of things. And so if there's some kind of something we can incorporate in our recommendation that kind of proactively addresses that. My, my, yeah. my comment was going to be, you know, it, it sounds to me like we're sort of trying to balance um, turnout and responsiveness. Um, you know, I think if, if we if we move the mayor over to the district seat election and then we have six council members elected in, in one cycle and then only two in another, we're not providing the same level of, of responsiveness, although we might be create, creating increased voter turnout. Um, uh, and, and, you know, my feeling, at least at this point, is that if we think the election of the mayor and or the at-large seats are going to drive turnout, then, then maybe we are better off dividing up the districts, you know, aligning at least one at-large seat in the and the mayor with one cycle or the other um, and, um, you know, moving forward in that way. I know, as Jerry said, maybe that has a greater impact on, you know, how the districts are allocated or they have to be allocated more regularly. But I would, my opinion right now anyway, is that I'd rather have that than a, a severely lopsided uh, election cycle. Well, maybe we can ask if Jerry's still here, maybe we can ask him to kind of give us the logistics of that and uh, help me at least understand um, if we did separate them, how that would play into the whole census and redistricting if Jerry's still on. Uh, well, the census data is going to be this year coming out in August and it's still up in the air about whether the election's going to be postponed or not, I suspect we're going to know that in the next three or four weeks, I would think, whether the legislature takes any action. But the if you were to expand the council, if you weren't, if the no changes are made in the council, then the redistricting has to be done before the next city council election, whenever that is. Um, if you're expanding the council, um, pending a referendum on that, you'd have to adopt a, one plan for the existing five seats and the council would have to adopt another plan maybe for six district seats. If you added an at-large seat, it wouldn't matter, for example. I mean, there's all these nuances of that. Is, is that responsive to the question? I wasn't quite sure. Well, if we just, um, if we decided to, and for the benefit of, if you assume that having citywide elections increases turnout, which I think it, it certainly doesn't hurt it. You kind of presume it increases it. Um, if we just, let's assume we kept council the way it was. If we assigned, um, not assigned, but divided up the at-large so that on a staggered situation, some districts, not all districts would be elected on the same cycle so that we would maybe divide up the at large so that you know half the districts and one at large are up for election and then the, the second half the mayor and one of the at large are up for elections how does that logistically what are the complications with the census now and just going forward i mean you could do that uh, there's gonna have to be redistricting before all of this changes anyway i would think unless somehow you're to put this into effect before the city election which is probably unlikely. So then it would be the 20, 2031, 2030 census. And we wouldn't know whether council seats were up in 2031 or three or some of them each, um, but it has caused problems for when the Wake School Board had four year staggered terms for all of their nine district members, it did create problems redistricting. I cited the one case of my precinct, because when precincts move around and in, in my precinct, I wasn't able to vote for these four year terms for six years, whereas the precinct across Ray Road got to vote in um, 93 and 95. And whereas mine was a six year gap. So I mean, that can happen too, which made people in my neighborhood very angry. 
Uh, and that's going to happen in various places over the city if you redistrict when council members are not all up at the same time. And there was a lot of um, anger in my area. I guess people in the next precinct were really happy to get to vote twice in a row. So, okay. So that's a, just obviously a consideration we, we have to make and a trade off um, now, as a group. Go, if you do go to splitting up the at large into two different cycles, normally the way that transits is that at the first election, the top vote getter for district gets a four year term and the second person gets a two year term. And that's how you normally get to that system. Um, and also, you know, it's also possible if you have district elections and it's just the districts on the ballot, I've seen situations where you might have basically an uncontested seat in one district, or somebody could write somebody in and another district might have seven people running. So, I mean, you, there's a, not an even pattern of, of what happens in, uh, in the different, in the five different council districts. Okay, well, let's bring it back to the group. Um, Again, having heard that, are there, and again, we don't have to decide today, but um, I think conceptually we should think about, you know, regardless of the logistics of implementation and that, do we, I guess our, you know, overall, if we feel strongly about a particular system and how it uh, provides responsiveness for citizens and um, also addresses the voter turnout. Um, my sense is to kind of weigh that more heavily and then, and then deal with the logistics and the implementation issues um, after, but that's just kind of my way of thinking about it. Um, others, please uh, weigh in because I want to hear from everybody. Eric, I have a question. I don't know if, if anybody knows the answer to this question, but I was just curious, is it electing the mayor that drives broader turnout or is it electing an, anybody citywide that seems to drive broader turnout? I have to believe that it's mostly the mayor. <laughs> yeah, I would suspect the mayor as well. And Jerry might want to weigh in on that. Um, and so, you know, I'm thinking we're in a situation where we've got, um, we can't find the perfect solution. We're going to have to trade off here the number of people that might show up if we just did all district races, unless we want to change the date of the elections to be on the same cycle as the big elections and we're not operating, and that's another whole dynamic. So I, I, I think we're at the risk of having the district races be uh, less impactful or the at large being less impactful depending upon where we put the mayor in that situation regardless. I'm curious to see the voter turnout data in the uh, staggered uh, North Carolina cities. Hey, uh, others, uh, do others have comments or thoughts on that? Yeah, I have just a few quick thoughts. Um, I, I take very seriously Jerry's take on the risks of dividing the district seats into alter alternate cycles. Um, I think that the running the risk of having certain precincts that end up getting locked out of district-based votes for two cycles is a, would be a really bad outcome. Um, that pushes my preference for keeping all the districts kind of in, that, in the same four-year cycle really, really high. Um, also, regarding the, the merits of putting the mayor on a four years term along with the rest of the council and trying to figure out where to stick that office in terms of with the at large or the districts. I, I take well, you know, Harvey's point and that some others that it seems unfair to put the mayor onto a two year term if it seems like if the rest of the council is on a four year term. 
in which case, yeah, we are trying to optimize between having the mayor on the cycle that is best going to boost turnout that might be hurt the most by not having um, citywide candidates on the ballot. However, my, my thoughts and thinking through leaving the mayor on a two-year cycle kind of fits along this particular narrative and I can absolutely be persuaded, but I do want to put this kind of out for everybody to consider. So if our if our city were a mayor managed city, like I would be 100% on board, mayor needs to be four year terms. However, that's not what we have. The mayor serves as a driver of turnout. The mayor serves as a focal point of citywide discussion around where are we going, what's important, what kind of message and face do we want to put on the city. It's a very I'm not saying that there's no governance responsibility for the mayor, obviously there is, but the mayor carries a lot of messaging responsibility and a lot of public facing responsibility that I think could still serve the city really well in having that position up every two years. It serves as a focal point for kind of those more um, immediate term concerns about responsiveness and about representation and about changes in the direction. And I think that that, that position can uniquely fit those concerns and those needs for the community in ways that I think get balanced out by having a city council that does run on staggered four-year terms, that does have that kind of continuity of governance um, to provide as, as, a, as a ballast. So those are just kind of my thoughts and the merits potentially of, of leaving the mayor on a two-year cycle, even if the rest of the city council moves to four years. Um, and separately, if we do have concerns about it being a very unbalanced two-year cycle um, in terms of uh, splitting, having districts on one side and having at-large on the other, we could potentially talk about, I know later on about the size of council and whether or not that can be balanced out by having, by recommending that there be more at-large seats. There are a lot of different ways to kind of like, there are a lot of different level, level, levers to pull in terms of maximizing for these different value sets that we're all trying to balance. And you know, Harvey, I think you're exactly right. There's no one system that is going to perfectly address all of the concerns that we have. We're trying to optimize for as many values as we can with the model that we recommend. And I think that it's worth kind of just continuing to talk through and think through what those different levers might be. Well, I oh, and my one final point. Sorry, oh, the one good. final thought that I had in leaving the districts all together, I mean, obviously, yeah, Jerry's district and concerns is really big, but also the districts, yes, like we're gonna, we will get into figuring out how we can increase turnout for district, um, yeah, for voter turnout for the district elections in particular. But at the same time, the district elections are always gonna be a little bit more idiosyncratic than everything else because by nature of the districting and the way that that all looks, the districts have their own personalities. They do have their own kind of unique quirks and relationships between their voting pools and their representatives. So I think that getting caught up in how all of those dynamics will play out for the districts could, could potentially lead us into like trying to imagine all kinds of crazy scenarios and they're, they're all possible, they're all likely. And I think that that's more a function of that's what you get with districts as opposed to citywide. Uh, elections, and I don't know that there's that much we can really do to try to solve for that, other than try to figure out all the various ways we can increase turnout kind of across the board. Yeah, now I'm done. Well, let me ask others. Uh, let's maybe just do this. Are there folks on the call? And I will say that I, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I think Nirvana had concerns about um, staggering at our last meeting. And so I just want to put that out there because she wasn't able to attend. So I don't want to leave her view out. And I see Catherine shaking her head. So if I may correct in that, then tell me so. But otherwise, I just want to make sure that view is still out there. Um, do people have strong opinions about uh, keeping a mayor on a two-year cycle? I'd like to hear from others. If I might, Eric, um, I'd be interested in hearing. I, I, I or, uh, I'm not don't know whether they would want to go on record, but the mayor of Kerry and the mayor of Durham are on those two-year cycles, as I understand. It would be interesting to see, a, to Justin's point, what kind of 
action takes place in terms of voter turnout, and then B, what their personal experience has been. I'm, Eugene gives us a good view of council's perspective because he's been there. Is there a past mayor in Cary or a past mayor in Durham? If Cary is one of those two, uh, that could give us some feedback. Uh, that uh, might be useful anecdotal uh, feedback. Yeah, I'm sure that a current mayor is not going to weigh in, obviously, for obvious reasons, but we might, um, it's certainly possible if we can uh, identify, and I think, yeah, we can identify a past mayor potentially and get their thoughts and maybe um, invite them to share their views uh, with us. But, um, but for now, are, do folks have a, visceral feeling about uh, keeping the mayor on a on a two-year cycle to with the districts to encourage turnout to me it seems like the best option we have at the moment for voter turnout i mean it you know not what i thought i'd want to do going into this but it seems like that's probably the best option we've we found for now Others? Do we feel like as a group, it would be safe to say though, in a scenario where we have a better balance of at-large and district representation, then in that case, we would be generally advocates for the mayor being on the same cycle as the district, or does the group kind of feel like this is no matter how, what representation balance is or how that may change in the future, this is the best scenario for us. I think it's probably still the best scenario. And we, but that does bring up another point I was gonna point out is, seems like from what I've heard in discussions around, if we were to add more seats to council, most people want more district seats and not more at large seats. Um, so something else to think about as we think about how this cycle would be divided up. Because if that happens, it's gonna become even more lopsided. And is that a problem? You know, it goes, it sort of goes against some of the continuity, I guess we wanted, but um, just something else to throw out there to think about. Well, let's, um, I, I agree with that. Let's, I don't want us to get distracted on that, because that's probably going to be one of our most difficult um, issues to deal with. But, it, but it's certainly valid how the mix of districts and that large, if we decide to um, expand. Um, but I would just like folks to weigh in as it's structured today. And again, we're not, we're not going to hold people to this. But as it's structured today, if it seems like it's the most practical um, to keep the at-large separate and have districts uh, separate on the election cycle for this for staggering. Um, my sense is that then having the mayor on a two-year cycle to encourage that turnout makes the most sense. Uh, and I'd like folks to just kind of share their thoughts on that if you don't mind because i would like to take everybody's temperature again on that and again we're not going to hold people to to a hard and fast comment today eric this is beth just to just to weigh in on that my 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 thought is um i'm a little hesitant to do that because um i feel like you know the mayor you know sort of is charged with a vision uh, for the city, and if we, uh, you know, hold the mayor to a shorter term, that gives less of an opportunity to the person who is, in theory, at least, designing the vision for the city to implement it. And so, I, I almost feel like um, the mayor's term ought, ought to be longer because of that burden of, um, you know, putting forward a vision for the city of as a whole. Um, but th this isn't something I had really considered until, you know, this discussion. 
So if we, if we uh, like as it exists today, that would be, we'd have two at large up and then we'd have the districts and the mayor up and I guess you do run the risk of a really wholesale um, gutting of some of the maybe potentially longer term, you know, tougher decisions if you do it that way. Um, you know, it's 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 tough for me. I, I would. You know, if we did that, I would like to see if and if we're going to, again, I'm going back on what I said. I don't like the idea of having just two at large up um, and then have that much of a lopsided election on the other election cycle. Um, so I, I'm sorry. Uh, Eric, I do think. Uh, uh, if, if you look at the federal elections, midterms tend to have less than presidential terms. Maybe the district races are by nature going to be less uh, engaging for the public. And maybe that's something we accept. The mayor every two years, I, I know Bill Bell, who is the mayor in Durham and would be interested in talking to him about potential unintended consequences. Now they've had a pretty stable situation in terms of his leadership over time, but I, 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 I have, I, I, we're making a trade off here one way or another and I'm putting the mayor every two years to Beth's point, having continuity out of the mayor and a vision for the city makes a lot of sense to me and putting that on trial every two years sounds like we're in the same, we're putting ourselves in that same box where every year we are governing and then a year we're paying attention to when, when the next shoe is gonna fall. And so we, we, we're, we're short-terming our thinking as opposed to long-terming our thinking and, and we're trying to get that balance. So I'm, I'm leaning towards the mayor on a four-year cycle with the at-large and the district people and, and accepting as a outgrowth of that, that we're going to have less turnout in that election, but that's okay, because that's going to speak to the issues that are important to those particular districts. The other issue is about the overall direction of the city, and there's a balance between those two perspectives. Others, I'd like to, we have, we have a lot of, a few people talking a lot. So I'd like to get, I wanna make sure we all share our thoughts and concerns and pros and cons of this. So um, Diana, I don't know if you've, uh, I don't wanna put anybody on the spot. You're not required to say anything, but I'd like to make sure everybody's had, it feels comfortable sharing their thoughts. Yeah, I've been listening. Um, I was more leaning and thinking about it, more leaning towards the mayor uh, running with the at-large and then the district, um, you know, running on their own. But if we, are, are we gonna be adding, are we recommending, recommending that there will be more seats added? Like two um, people um, rec um, representing, um, you know, like district C add one more person. Is that up for discussion? Well, at this point, one of the tasks that they, the council, they kind of tossed in at the end was that we could consider the size of council. Um, it wouldn't be, and maybe I misunderstood your comment, but I want to make sure, um, it wouldn't be to add additional representatives in a district, it would be to add a district representative so that um, it basically shrinks the uh, population per district 
and you'd add another district and you'd have to carve that out with whatever federal laws and guidelines it would be. So, um, so it, would, it wouldn't be that District C would get another representative, it would be that there'd be another district and they, they would slice the city up and, um, so that each district representative represented fewer, uh, presumably fewer people. Um, so we, we are gonna consider that, but, but at this point, uh, we're just trying to see as it's structured today, kind of conceptually where we, where we fit. Um, and having heard everybody, I, I'm leaning towards uh, having the mayor and the at-large together, because I think both, I think to Harvey's point and, and Beth's, um, I feel like the real weakness of the system we have now is that, um, you know, this, the frequency of the elections contributes to more short-term thinking and decision-making uh, by council than uh, it does contribute to longer term implementation of kind of visions and comprehensive plans and things like that. Um, and then, you know, districts are much more uh, sensitive to uh, zoning decisions and, um, you know, things that affect, you know, folks in their districts. Uh, and, you know, that can really change the complexion of an election in a district. I mean, if you have a, a controversial zoning decision, um, that can really change the uh, dynamic in the election and, um, and serves a purpose. Uh, but it, the turnout in one district because of a, case, a situation like that could also um, impact you know the mayor's race and you may, you know people may find you know disagree with the thinking but um, a mayor could be a victim of a one zoning decision uh, where kind of the general direction of the city you know citizens more broadly uh, support the general direction of the city but because of a, a particular zoning decision or two zoning decisions in two districts you could have uh, turnout that you know, theoretically could tip the balance against a, a mayor too for a local decision, if that makes sense, uh, to the detriment of the law, of the broader policies of the city. Um, Justin, do you have thoughts or comments? Yes, well, for one, I, I believe the low voter turnout is a result of the current or the existing race falling on an off year election cycle. Um, so if we were to somehow propose, I guess, a new idea or, or a proposal where we could align the, the mayoral race and the district with the federal election, I think you probably have more more voter turnout, an increase in voter turnout uh, to that regard. Um, and also in terms of the continuity um, aspect, I'm not opposed to a four year term, you know, as opposed to a two year term existing uh, with the mayoral um, election or the cycle. So those are just my, my thoughts, uh, especially in my experience, here's a here's others. This is Janie. I, I just wanted to jump in real quick to address Mr. Sutton's first comment about kind of trying to align the elections with a different cycle. Unfortunately, those are set by statute, the, the time period or the year. And so that's not something that, that we could really do as the city. That would have to be something that the General Assembly would have to propose. Is that not in the ordinance? where it could come before city council. That's not, that's not, not one sure. of the... Go ahead, Eric. Um, I don't believe that is not one of the options in the menu that the state statutes give cities to make on their own. It would require the city asking for local legislation and 
um, that raises all kinds of uh, potential other issues that um, I can't speak for council, but uh, you know, I think that goes beyond our charge anyway. I think they wanted us to, uh, our recommendations to fit within the four corners of the, you know, what the statute authorizes us, us to do at this point. Um, I think we could, you know, consider putting a footnote to any sort of recommendation we have. Um, but I, I think that it would potentially weaken our, whatever recommendation we do, if, we, if it's subject to um, having to require, having to request uh, statutory authority from the, uh, from the General Assembly. And I, uh, for that, some- All right, I'm ahead. sorry. Oh, I, well, I, yeah, I just haven't, I haven't read the, the charter. So I, yeah, like I said, I don't wanna speak out of turn or out of place if that is, a provision in the charter that confers that uh, that authority upon the city council. It does not. And so um, the Charlotte group dropped a couple things uh, from their request when they when they realized that uh, I think when they realized that it would require uh, state legislation to change the charter, um, they they dropped, I think, the idea of term limits and um, something else when it when it became, you know, I guess the group was advised that those weren't permitted under the under the existing kind of menu that the state law gives oh. cities to consider. So, well, it's um, mere, merely theoretical, um, just that notion. In yeah, terms of the yeah. And and some people, and I, you know, some people suggest that if it's if it goes on the um, aligns with national elections, uh, you kind of, the local issues kind of get swamped by the money and the spending on the national elections. And you might, you definitely would boost turnout, but you may, you know, people may be voting for the, on the national issues more. Uh, and theoretically, I think, and I don't know that, I'm just surmising that if, people vote in the off year, year elections, you may have folks that are voting and are more informed on local issues uh, and care about it more. So you might be getting a more accurate reflection of, from, from the community that actually is in tune with what's going on in the local issues. Now, I'm sure people can argue the, you know, the other side of that, but I just, you know, but I don't think we should, I think we're just, we should operate within the bounds that we're, we can with state law right now. And, um, and go from there. So I think from, from I'm gonna to try to, well, first, does anybody else wanna comment on this? Please just jump in. Okay, hearing none, then I'm gonna to try to summarize what I heard today. And, and I, if I'm wrong, please jump in too. So it sounds as though Again, there's consensus on the overall concept of having staggered terms, at least for the folks that were in attendance. Is that accurate? I think we think that's what we heard. So then the question, I think the thing we got a little hung up on is how do we, how do we divide up the, how do we stagger all district all uh, at large and mayor. And uh, the really only sticking point there, I think was whether the mayor would be every two years and go and be put on the district side. Um, so, and then I think a number of us kind of shifted our view to think that you almost have elections that are one side focused on the big picture and the long-term vision of the city if you put the mayor with the at-large and you have more of a localized election uh, for the issues that are most uh, are local to those districts. So I guess there's a, you know, there's a method in that madness, even if as some suggested, even if the turnout may be lower, um, those elections may be refined to the point that they are really focused on uh, local issues. Uh, to some extent. So um, is that a fair, 
kind of summary of what we've kind of where we are? It's a yes. Okay, I'm gonna take that as a yes then. I think that let's, um, let's put a pin on the idea of how to, how to divide the staggering up. And um, I may assign, hey, Harvey, would you be willing to um, help me and Justin kind of look at, identify maybe past, if it's okay with the group, uh, we, had, we see if there are former elected officials from uh, Durham and I think Cary that have, or other local jurisdictions that have the uh, mayor on a two-year cycle uh, and see if they would be willing to share their thoughts on that structure versus um, you know, keeping them on four-year terms with the at-large. Does anybody oppose uh, uh, us doing that and trying to bring some speakers back? Does anybody think that would be a waste of time and we shouldn't bother? Don't be shy. I okay. think we should get uh, other views. I like that comment, so I, I like the recommendation. We okay. Harvey, are you willing to help us with that task? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to reach out um, to Mayor Bell and see what I can find out uh, and whether he'd be willing to talk to us or at least share some uh, observations. I, I, frankly, as this conversation has gone on, I've gotten more towards putting the mayor and the at-large on one cycle. But I, I think for the purposes of um, doing our due diligence, uh, that that kind of feedback would be useful. And I also think we might see something with some of the other communities we might have added to the list to see if there's anything there that uh, shows up in the research. Okay, well, let's let's pursue that. Um, and we are uh, we are have some of our research done. I want to just give you an update on that. Um, and we have reached out to every municipality uh, that we were trying to get information from. And we have, I'd say about 30% of what we need. We've got some follow-up to do. Um, I think we're gonna be, I think we essentially have, frankly, what we need on the uh, four-year versus two-year and the staggering. The real issue that we're you know, looking at is um, and trying to get information on is um, compensation and um, district size to kind of get a sense of, and that will lead to kind of the last, and maybe the most, uh, potentially the most difficult issue we'll have, which is uh, expanding the size of council and then whether those are district or, um, at large or some combination. I think that, you know, my sense is compensation, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to come up with a compromise position that's um, kind of consistent with what's been going on on the rest of the state and um, reasonable, And but we just need to get that information. So for next time, um, we may or may not be able to have some more input from a former elected official, but maybe we can try to get that. And I would like to put a pin in this idea and if folks will think about um, their views and if they evolve about whether we keep the mayor and the at-large on one cycle and then uh, district on another cycle. Uh, I'd like to see if we can reach consensus on that at the next meeting subject to if we have input from uh, some other folks and new data. And, um, and then I think we're gonna be in a position that we may not have all the uh, compensation information, but I think we'll be able to start talking about compensation kind of in broader terms. And um, the Charlotte report, I think we, you can see uh, the strong mayors have very high, you know, executive level kind of compensation. Council manager has lower compensation, but there's a range on that. So. 
I think we should plan on exploring that both in the um, the Charlotte report, and then I think we'll have some additional data, but I think we can start that conversation. Uh, are there other topics that anyone wants to include for the next meeting or anything you feel like they want to talk about today that we have not um, not touched on? And again, don't be don't be shy. I don't want to necessarily take our whole two hours, obviously, we're at an hour and a half now. So um, having said all that, uh, please let me know. Are there other topics you want to talk about next meeting? And are you okay coming back a little bit with some more discussion about how to divide up the staggering and then start with the compensation conversation? Got a quiet group today. Eric, uh, one, yep. one, one thing that I am curious about is how many of our committee members are vaccinated and when we might be able to get together uh, in a real um, a meeting setting. Um, so uh, that that's that was just been on my list. I, I, while I enjoy looking at these um, one dimensional uh, images, I'm looking for uh, being able to meet you all personally somewhere uh, down the road. Well, um, a couple of things. I think that I don't think we are, and maybe the city attorney's office can weigh in. I certainly agree. I am looking forward to having real meetings with people and and in a room or in a some sort of setting. But I don't know that we're allowed to do that while the governor's emergency order is pending. And if the city attorney's office might weigh in on that. So I, I'm not sure it's necessarily um, because of the governor's order, but but right now the city is choosing not to have okay. person meetings. Okay, so we have to follow the city's guidance and policy on that. But um, if you can let us know when uh, that policy changes, or if it, or if has the city made a date yet on when they're going to start uh, not in that, person? Not that I know of, not yet. Okay. Yeah, I can okay. I can weigh in on that too. I mean, I think you could probably find a way under the governor's order, as we said, and I don't know that. I think the bigger question or what we have found out is there are very few groups or boards that we deal with where somebody doesn't not want to meet in person. <laughs> so yeah. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a touchy subject in that regard. Um, I think we're moving more closely that way, but I do think, you know, if you had a board, if you all wanted to meet in person and everyone was vaccinated and comfortable in it, I mean, I think that was something that, you know, could be approached perhaps, but I don't know if you've got that or not. And that also suggests that we would need staff participation and we don't want to make any, put any staff member in any sort of um, uncomfortable situation. But what I, maybe I suggest this, um, I don't wanna put everybody on the spot, obviously in a meeting, but if you are interested in meeting um, in person, um, if you wanna send me an email maybe or reach out otherwise, call me. Um, or if you're not comfortable and you feel comfortable sharing that with me, let me know and it'll give me a sense of where we are because we, I have no interest in making anyone uncomfortable uh, in any form or fashion and so, um, you know, if for some reason the group collectively is comfortable doing that, you know, meeting, I'm certainly, uh, luckily I've been vaccinated, so I'm certainly open to exploring it, but, um, we don't want to be in a position. And I know nobody in this group wants to put anybody in a position that they're uncomfortable or feel like they can't, um, contribute. So. I like that. All right. I like that approach. And, uh, there's no need to raise hands or anything else. People can communicate you with you and we can touch base on this every other, uh, uh, when, when we meet next, just to see if we're, if the temperature's improving. Good, good, I agree. So feel free to reach out to me if you have a, if you're either you're comfortable meeting in person or you're uncomfortable and I will obviously not share that with the group. Um, and I haven't heard anybody uh, want anything else added to the agenda for next time. So like I said, let's um, see if we can come up with consensus on the um, 
on the, how to stagger the term since we kind of agree in con conceptually that we think staggering is a good idea. Harvey is going to explore uh, talking to Mayor Bell and maybe any other elected officials and localities that have that scenario. And, um, and then we'll start our conversa conversation on compensation at our next meeting. Is there any other business? Otherwise, I'm going to let everybody uh, go. And I appreciate the public's uh, participation in the meeting as well. Uh, and um, we are now meeting the second, just for the public's benefit. We're now meeting the um, second and fourth Wednesdays of each month from uh, noon to two. We don't always have, we're not going to plan on taking the full two hours. Uh, and so those meetings now are established so the public doesn't have to wait for us to tell them when we're going to meet. Um, and so with that, I'm going to go ahead and ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. I make a motion that the meeting be adjourned. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion second. All in favor to adjourn the meeting, say aye. 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 Excuse me. <laughs> Okay, thank you everybody. I really appreciate your time and um, contributions. It's been very helpful. Take care, we'll see you at the next meeting. Okay, Bye -bye. thank you. Have a great week.